as you heard before the break, first of all, it's past 4.15. We're going to go for about another half an hour, and then we'll break. Um, I appreciate your patience today and over the last number of days. This next witness is a defense witness. The defense is calling this witness. He's being called out of order after this witness is done, either today or Monday, we'll continue with. I think there's hopefully just a few more state's witnesses. Make sense? All right. Sir, can you stand, raise your right hand, be sworn in, please? I do. My name is Mark Robinson, spelled M A R C R O B I N S O N. Good afternoon, Mr. Robinson. Uh, where are you employed? Uh, the name of the, my company is Authentic Forensics. Okay. Yes, what? Authentic Forensics. Can you use the microphone to speak up, please. Sorry. Mr. Robertson, where is your business located? In Wayne, New Jersey. Okay. And what services do you provide? I provide analysis, enhancement, and authentication on audio and video files. Okay. And how long have you been providing these services? Full time since 2014. And if you could tell us a little bit about your education. I have a degree in electronic engineering technologies. I'm a certified audio video forensic analyst, and I'm also a certified cybercrime examiner. Are you involved in any forensic organization? I'm an expert for the state of, uh, an audio video forensic expert for the state of New Jersey, Office of Public Defenders. Um, I'm the board of directors of the Scientific Association of Forensic Examiners, um, and I serve as the education chair. I'm also the manager of Forensics Audio Video Innovations and Solutions, which is a professional organization with over 6,000 active members. Okay. Have you had a, a paper published in an industry magazine? I was published in July of 20 in eForensics magazine. And have you ever testified at federal court before? I have. Okay. And where was the last time that you testified at federal court? Last time I testified was in Sioux City, Iowa case was State of Iowa versus uh, Dwight Charles Evans. Okay. And what was that case regarding? It was a homicide. Okay. And who represented, who, I'm sorry, who retained your services in that case? The Woodbury County Prosecutor's Office. Okay, so in that case you worked for the prosecution, correct? That's correct. All right. And my office contacted you about a surveillance video we wanted you to examine and enhance, is that correct? That's correct. And how did you receive this video? I received it uh, electronically through a secure file transfer. Okay. And how did you begin your examination of the video? Whenever I receive a, a piece of digital evidence, first thing I want to do is create a working copy. It's called a working copy. Um, so how you do that is you take the original file, you run it through a program that generates a hash output. The hash is a long series of letters and numbers, and you can think of it as kind of a a digital fingerprint of that file. It's unique to that file only. I then uh, made a copy of the original, ran a hash on the copy, and uh, reviewed to make sure the two hashes were the same numbers and letters. And, and once they were, now I know I'm working with an identical copy of the original file. Okay, and after making the working copy, what did you do then? I then uh, imported it into a program called Video Cleaner. Say that again, video what? Video cleaner. And if you could explain to the members of the jury, what is video cleaner? Video cleaner is a forensic enhancement and tamper detection software. Um, it was originally designed for law enforcement and then the developers released it uh, to the public. The program is an open source, which is important because that means all its filters and tools are subject to peer review. I've contributed to the development of that program, and I'm also certified as an expert in its use. Okay. Certified as an expert in the use of video cleaner. And you were compensated for your services as it relates to preparing the forensic video, correct? I was. And if you could explain to the members of the jury, what was your fees in this case? To clarify the video, I charged uh, 895 
to uh, render the videos. And as far as your testimony here today, uh, what is your fees related to that? I charge a flat rate of $2,000 per day. It includes my expenses like hotel and ground transportation. Okay. And what is the total cost that you received as far as compensation for the testimony that you provided today? The total cost for this case is approximately $5,500. Okay. All right. With that being said, I want to now go into uh, what is being marked as defense exhibit number Mr. Robinson, uh, what are we looking at here? This is the video that I uh, exported out of Video Cleaner. So the original video, my, my goal is to improve the viewability of the, of the video. So I adjusted the levels to make it a little brighter in the darker regions. I also uh, added a little sharpening to make the details a little clearer. Okay. And if we could go ahead and play the entirety of the video, please. Now, Mr. Robinson, there was another version of this video that you made as well, correct? That's correct. Um, and that other version would be named Clarified Zoom Sequence, correct? That's correct. All right. I'll give you the pause real quick. Now, Mr. Robinson, if you can explain to the members of the jury what changes did you make in this video? In this video, I. I applied additional enhancements. Because the subjects were moving away from the camera, I applied zoom so you could follow their actions. I also paused it on certain frames. Um, I annotated the video. Anno annotated means when you add like arrows or descriptive writing. In this case, I used a red circle. Um, I also took a segment of the video and rendered it in slow motion so you could see the actions more clearer. All right, we'll go ahead and play. To clarify zoom sequence.
Mr. Robinson, were both those versions a fair and accurate representation of the original video with the exceptions to what you just testified that you did to those videos? Yes, they are. At this time, we move defense 25 into evidence. Any objection? Well, there's more on 25 than what you played. Are you moving everything on 25 then? Um, we were only that which was played? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just those two there? Yeah, no problem. Fine, admitted. <clears throat> All right, no more questions for you then. Stay. Nothing, thank you. All right, you can step down. Oh, actually, thank you. Hey, hang on. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Forget it. You can step down. Thank you. If the state has another witness, we can at least start with that person. Um, honestly, Judge, I just saw what the defense gave me right there before, so I thought it was going to take a little longer. So I didn't have any other witness. I thought this was going to take until the end. So can we? I I don't have anything else. How many additional witnesses are you expecting Monday? Um, four or five. All of them relatively short? Fairly short, yeah. <clears throat> All right, that being the case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll break for today. It's 4.30. Um, Obviously, or hopefully it's obvious, I'm trying to push forward as much as possible and get as much testimony in as I can. Uh, I appreciate, as I've said earlier, all of you being um, patient, being here on time, being back from lunch on time. Uh, I certainly appreciate all of that. Um, my initial estimate was we'd be done on Monday. Now I think Tuesday is more realistic. So a few things. Obviously, as you've heard all week this week, I'm going to ask that you not watch any online reporting of this case or TV reporting of this case. If there's a newspaper article or anything of that sort, I ask that you not read it. If anything's passed along secondhand, if somebody puts this on your Facebook page or somebody forwards you a text or an email or anything related to this case, please ignore it. Uh, the evidence that you are assessing and you need to consider is the evidence, the testimony, the witnesses, the video, and other things that have been shown to you over the course of the last three or four days and over the next day or two. Um, I trust that you will follow that instruction. Given that it's the weekend and instead of just overnight, it's a couple of days, please don't discuss this matter with anyone else. Um, don't discuss with your family, your friends, your neighbor, anybody. Um, you all remember the story Mr. Hubner told during voir dire that that includes your neighbor, best friend, or even your bartender. Please don't discuss it with anybody. Um, certainly, again, I appreciate your efforts. The lawyers appreciate your efforts. Um, there was a lot of testimony today. I don't know about you guys, but that was the first time I ever noticed the difference between farm and fleet and fleet farm. I'm dead serious. I've never noticed that in my entire life that there were two separate firms. But years ago, I presided in a probate case and in a probate court. I can tell you what probably happened is that's a multi, multi million dollar company. It was probably left to one or two siblings. They got in a big fight and they resolved it by one being Fleet Farm and one being Farm and Fleet. So you learn something new every day. Um, have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, go Packers. We'll see you on Monday at 8 30. Your Honor, before we go, um I talked to your, your clerk pointed out that 68 and 70 had been moved in. 68 and 70? 68 and 70. Fine. They're received. Again, go Packers. See you on Monday. Jerry's been excused. We're done for the day. We're off the record back Monday at 830.